So far, Brexit has been an absolute comedy of errors. From fishermen who were once promised the sovereignty and pure bounty of, of British waters, now being unable to, to go out and fish in those waters because they can't export their fish to their main export markets. We've had the cheesemakers who are now finding that exporting to the EU is now 10 times more expensive than it used to be. Many industries are also finding that they now have, have to face mountains of new red tape. Um, you know, a, a veterinary bill form for maybe, maybe the, the, the meat industry costs about £130. And those add up. That money adds up very, very quickly, especially to small businesses that pretty much live within the margins. And it will be ultimately the small and medium-sized businesses that just give up exporting to Europe altogether. Um, we've seen numerous numerous stories popping up already of businesses that send par parcels abroad and then the customer at the other end basically refuses to pay the customs charge and then as a result the parcel is sent back and then businesses are now put in a position where it is cheaper for them to burn their products than it is to return the package not only that a story um on the bbc that popped up today Someone had to pay a £30 customs charge for a gift that they received. Yeah, it's, um, it's very, very worrying. But these are the impacts of Brexit and these are here to stay. These are not teething troubles. And one of the big, big things that was constantly talked about during Brexit was what would happen to the Nissan Sunderland plant. And a lot of Brexiteers got very, very happy, especially over the weekend, when Sunderland's, when the Sunderland, when uh, Nissan put out an announcement that they were going to stay in um, the UK. However, just because they said they're going to stay doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to change their mind. It doesn't necessarily mean that, for example, there isn't going to be a descaling maybe of the Sunderland plant, which will not lead to, you know, all the workers losing their jobs, but it might lead to some, or maybe a large number of them, losing their jobs. You know, these are serious problems, and it doesn't stop Nissan from even maybe in a, like two years' time re-examining its plant and going, there's no point investing in the plant anymore, so over the next couple of years, we're just going to move jobs equipment over to Europe and slowly the Sunderland plant just dies a death over a number of years. That could be very well what happens and like I say today we're going to go over a piece that pretty much outlines not all is rosy for a few, for the future of the Sunderland plant. So as always before we do get jump into that please do remember to hit that like and share button and also, uh, <laughs> and also down below there is a link to my Patreon page and a one of donation link and thank you very much to those people who do support me that way. So now that I've got my teeth in properly. <laughs> um, this comes from the North East Bylines and it says, the title of the article is, Are Things Really So Rosy? For the Nissan plant in Sunderland. You may remember a group of local residents regularly campaigning outside the Sunderland Nissan factory last year for a good Brexit deal to save the plant. I was one of them and although we felt that the deal was struck was a generally poor one, we were uh, no one was more relieved than us that the zero tariff element uh, of it made the factory at least look sustainable. Last night, Nissan's chief operating officer, uh, Ashawi, uh, Shawi Gupta, I think that's like Ashawi Gupta, I think that's how you say it, announced, the Brexit deal is positive for Nissan. Being the largest automake, automaker in the UK, we are taking this opportunity to redefine automaking in the UK. It has created a competitive environment for Sunderland, not just inside the UK, but outside as well. He confirmed that Nissan will bring battery production to Sunderland, reportedly close to the existing UK plant. Current batteries are imported from Japan for their leaf cars. 
This will ensure that Nissan's uh, cars qualify for zero tariffs, which require at least 55% of the car's value to be uh, derived from either the UK or the EU. Currently, batteries for Nissan's Leaf are imported from Japan. And even Boris Johnson sent out a triumphal tweet this morning that this was great a great vote of confidence in the UK and fantastic news for the brilliant Nissan workforce in Sunderland and the electric and the electric manufacturing vehicles in this country. So, the question we must ask ourselves. Are things really as rosy as they seem? We have learnt a lot from our time protesting outside the Nissan factory. The most important being that it is the Japanese culture not to rock the boat where politics are concerned. It is also obviously makes good business sense to be as positive and, op and as optimistic as possible about a company's future. And I said that at the weekend as well. No company is just going to come out and say, um, oh, we're in, we're in trouble, we're in, we're in trouble, what are we going to do? So, you know, it, obviously they're going to be optimistic about it, but doesn't mean that by any means that the future of the plan is secure. Johnson himself clearly has a vested interest in making his Brexit deal look as successful as possible, and especially in a city so closely aligned to the Leave vote. The reality, however, remains that although Nissan has zero tariffs they wanted, there still remains other non-tariff barriers to trade, namely customs checks which will raise costs, cause delays and ultimately make them less competitive. Every time the UK plant has to bid with Nissan to make the new mod a new model in Sunderland, we will see in practice how good the Brexit deal really is. Let's not forget that the Sunderland plant did not win the bid to make their new electric car the Aria due to concerns about Brexit. Furthermore, Nissan would not confirm if bringing battery production to Sunderland would mean additional jobs at the plant itself. Nissan paused one of its two production lines on Friday due to disruption at ports, which they say is due to the pandemic. Struggling to get car parts from the EU is clearly going to have an impact on production, whatever the reason. However, we have all, however, we have all seen on the news the disruption to ports caused by Brexit red tape. And elsewhere, the future of the Ellesmere port plant was thrown into doubt by the chief executive officer, Carlos Traves, who said, looking forward, it would make more sense to, lo uh, to locate an electric vehicle factory closer to the larger EU market. Andy Palmer, the former boss of Aston Martin, says that over 800,000 jobs are at risk if the UK government doesn't act now to foster battery investment. And since the EU referendum, car investment in the UK has fallen dramatically. And they, um, so will it... Uh, Oh, hang on, there we go. So, uh, will it be that rather uh, than a dramatic overnight closure of the Sunderland plant, we were all feared instead will become a gradual decline over time that will be blamed on th other things other than Brexit? After almost a five years of uncertainty, the group of local residents feel that we are still playing a game of wait and see to see how the future of the Sunderland plant at Nissan really plays out. And that, to be honest, is the truth. I think, unfortunately, um, this Brexit deal will be a, a very slowly death by a thousand cuts. Um, Nissan had already um, slowed down production pre-pandemic because of Brexit. They every and they are true about every time like a new car comes to be produced, plants have to bid to get that car production and now what of the other factories that could very easily win it and it's not only that remember this is often thought of as a big nissan plant but it's not just that Renault has a 20 percent share in what goes on there as well if Renault decide there's no point staying and they leave 
that's 20% of the factory gone. That could be 20% of the jobs there gone. You know, there's, and as there was said there, just because they've said that they're bringing battery production there, they haven't announced extra jobs that he's going to create. So not all, unfortunately, is safe at this production plant. And the biggest irony of all is that this plant was created by using a special port, um, which was created when we were in the EU. Um, and of course, the idea of bringing back these uh, special port areas is um, one of the things Joris, uh, Joris, Joris Bonson, Boris Johnson has, has mooted um, that he wants to do. Well, we could have done that in the EU. There was nothing stopping us uh, from doing it. But one of the things that they don't tell you about these special plants was when this was done by Margaret Thatcher in the 80s, there were 12 made. And the only two that actually worked was the Isle of Dogs down in London and the one in Sunderland. And that only succeeded because Nissan moved there because of the single market and the attractiveness that it was. And Margaret Thatcher sold it as being the gateway to Europe. And now these idea of the special ports will come around again. And history has shown that it didn't work last time. Very likely they will not work again. So, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button uh, on your way out. And, of course, down below there's links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. And, as always, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you all next time.